life offers no guarantees, but the one thing we've learned for sure is that the time we have is indeed precious. The more time we spend with family, friends, and with nature can make the difference between living a good life and living a great one. Join us on our quest to be participants rather than observers, to learn from our mistakes, to share our successes and our failures as we spend all of the time we have chasing our dreams, fueling our passion, and fueling the fire in the great outdoors. Closed captioning is brought to you by Let's Roll Out ALS.ca. Welcome to Fuel the Fire TV. This week we're covering some whitetail hunts, some do-it-yourself whitetail hunts with the Fuel the Fire Pro Staff team. Now first up is Cody Hunter. Everyone knows how hard it is to get a mature whitetail, let alone when you try and get it on video and you're doing it yourself. The odds against you harvesting that deer go up exponentially. I'll show you what I mean. All right, folks, here we are. We're back out in the bow stand again. Um, we had three really nice bucks come in last night. They all stayed out about 100 yards. Too far for a shot. Uh, hopefully they come back tonight and get in range. All right, folks, uh, here we are. We're back in the bow stand. Uh, we had a really nice buck come in. I actually missed it. It was a pretty good shot. I don't know what happened, but hopefully we can get another chance at him. Oh, what an opportunity he had. Just to see that deer was a privilege, but we reviewed the footage. His crossbow bolt hit a limb and you could see it move after he fired it out of his crossbow. That doesn't deter him. He goes back into the deer woods. He sees another monster buck.
and this time Kaylee, who's running the camera, has a great view of the deer, but he doesn't and he has to pass. That's hunting and sometimes those are the breaks and after the break, the snow is on the ground and he gets back in the tree stand. This segment of Fuel the Fire TV was brought to you by Indigenous Tourism Ontario. This segment of Fuel the Fire TV is brought to you by Buck Down Archery. Welcome back to Fuel the Fire TV. This week, we're hunting white-tailed deer up on Manitoulin Island. Cody just missed a monster, but he and Kaylee are going back into the stand on a windy winter day, just at the end of archery season. Alrighty folks, well this is where you're standing. Looked like a pretty good hit in the video. Here's the arrow, there's lots of blood. I can see quite a bit of blood the way you ran there, so. Well, he seems to be bleeding pretty good. I don't think he went very far here. Like I said earlier, it sounded like he crashed just over to the right of us or the, or the left of us in the tree stand. As you can see, he's bleeding pretty good, so. Oh, there he is right over there. Alrighty 
folks, here he is. He's not the uh, biggest deer, but we're getting down the wire here. There's only a few days left in bow season. Uh, me and Kaylee have spent quite a bit of time this year chasing deer, and hey, this guy will be good eating. Uh, this is actually my first deer with the compound. I've shot a couple now with a crossbow, but so I'm pretty proud of that. Kaylee did a good job filming for her first time. This is the first deer she's ever been involved in shooting, so she's pretty excited about that. And uh, rifle season's next week, so maybe we'll get a chance at a bigger one then. Alrighty, folks, feel your passion, feel your fire, and get outdoors. This segment of Fuel the Fire TV is brought to you by Kickaboo Meat Seasoning. Hey folks, in this week's learning curve tip, and we're with Darren Smith, he's a local butcher who, work, who works here, and he's also an avid hunter. He's gonna break down a whitetail buck that was harvested here on the island, and he's gonna do it in a way that uh, keeps the whole carcass hanging on the hook. You'll notice that he has it hung right from the pelvic bone. We're gonna make one side into steaks and one side into roasts. You take the knife and separate the hip from from the pelvic bone. Right, there's the ball and socket. Yeah, and you have to remove that tendon. You have to cut that tendon or it will not go anywhere. It's best to use a flexible knife to get around all the little nooks and crannies. All right, and that's one. First off, we'll remove this sirloin tip which makes a good roast. It's fairly lean. You go along the bone, follow the bone, and then come straight up so you don't cut into the sirloin. Okay, so that's sirloin tip. Okay. That's the sirloin tip. Okay. And this is going to be the round, and this would be a sirloin. So now I'll remove all in one shot. The shank meat, which is for ground. Around the bone. Follow the bone with the tip of your knife. Okay, right along the tip there. So or right along the bone you can you yeah, can you see can, that. You can feel it with your knife tip. Yep. Now you have your round and your sirloin. Take your knife and cut the sirloin off. And those can either be cut into steaks or tied for a roast. So we'll cut this into steak. Then you'll have your round steak. Full round steak like that. And you cut them about one inch thick. You find that's about one what people want. Good, yeah. yeah. That's about as far as you want to go because there's a there's a gland in the middle here. Okay. And it's not good to eat. You cut that right out. Cut that right out. Then you can either make stew or ground into this. Let's cut it into chunks. Try to lean it up a little bit. Roughly one inch squares. Yep. Okay, so that could be a roast or it could be a steak. Yep. Okay, well let's do that. Let's I'll cut this one into steak. So you peel this cap off. There's a seam and everything, so you just follow the seam. This one pulls off real nice. A bit of dry skin then. And then you start to square up the end and then start to slice it. And those will be sirloin tip steaks. Okay. Perfect. There you have it, folks. That's this week's learning curve tip. We're butchering up a deer. Uh, it's part one of a three-part series for our learning curve tip. If we aren't taking our kids out into the wilderness, we aren't doing our jobs as conservationists. Now this past ice fishing season, Daryl Layton and I had the chance to take our daughters, Darcy and Malia, out to Nipissing, <laughs> Lake Nipissing with Snowfari Adventures, and we had a great time. Todd was a great host. We all caught some fish. We got to sleep right out on the ice for a couple of nights and we really had some bonding time with our kids. It was on that trip that Malia got to share with us her deer hunting season. Now you might remember Malia from season two where she harvested her first deer with archery equipment. This year she ventures out into the deer stand on her own with a camera and her rifle. It's 
November 21st, third day of mantle and rifle season. It's about minus 12 right now, it's been really cold. See what happens. Great shot, Melia. Not only with the camera, but with the rifle. You're definitely earning your stripes as a pro staffer for Fuel the Fire TV. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. This segment of Fuel the Fire TV is brought to you by JR Wetlands Outfitters. Welcome back to Fuel the Fire TV. If I had to choose to only hunt one animal, it would absolutely be white-tailed deer. And most likely, I'd be using archery tackle. There are so many things to consider when chasing whitetails. You've got so many variables. Your practice time, you've got wind direction, you've got scent, you've got food plots, you've got stand placement, and most importantly, how does your body react to adrenaline and an increased breathing rate? What I like to do in practice is to make sure that I practice my breathing. I try and get my heart rate under control by using square breathing. That means I match my inhalation to my exhalation. I breathe in for two seconds, I hold it for two seconds, I breathe out for two seconds, and I hold it for two seconds. At the end of that, that's when I release my arrow. Breathing is paramount and getting your adrenaline under control is of absolute importance, especially when you're hunting those monster whitetail bucks. Nobody knows this better than Stacy Rayner because he's about to put all of that to the test. Well, I just made a shot on my target buck. It didn't look like it was a very good shot placement. I watched him run through the field. He hit two fences trying to get out of the field. He ran right through my backyard because I can see my house from here. And I heard him hit another fence. I'm hoping he didn't go too far, but I don't know. It's gonna be a tough one. I'm having a hard time finding blood, but we're getting a little bit here and there now. So. There he is. Right on. First bow kill. First big deer for me. Pretty proud of this one. Not much penetration, but those broadheads sure do the job. Here we are with my 2018 archery buck. This is actually the first deer I've ever taken with the bow. And a few years ago, I told myself I didn't want to shoot a buck unless I figured it was going to be shoulder mount worthy. 
And to me, this guy fits the bill. I'm quite proud of him. A big thanks to all the guys that helped me. Cody, he's behind the camera. Tom Harper, he, thanks for helping a million, that's for sure. I had a few encounters with this buck this year, but finally connected on him, I couldn't be more proud. Remember folks, you feel your passion, feel your fire, you gotta get outdoors. That wraps up this week's deer hunting episode for Fuel of Fire. Three great deer to absolutely be proud of. And we have to remember to do just that. Be proud of our harvest and never undervalue it. Remember to follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and our YouTube channel. And new for Fuel of Fire is our podcast at Fuel of Fire TV. Until next week, remember to fuel your passion, fuel the fire, and get outdoors.